let's now talk about shells and terminals. So let me just go up to activities here. Down the bottom right, as we can see, we can have a terminal. This is exactly what we want to talk about. So let's just click this. Okay, so the very first concept that I want to talk to you about is something known as a shell. What on earth is this? Well, right now, as we know, we have this Red Hat Enterprise Linux installation. And here we are as a user. As you can see, we're looking quite happy. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. How amazing are my artistic skills? But realistically, that is about as good as I can do, unfortunately. So here we are. Here is our real operating system. We want a way to interact with this operating system. And this is exactly what a shell actually gives us. It gives us as the user a way to talk to the OS. Now, with respect to Linux, there are many different types of shell environments. You can use something known as a ZSH shell, as well as a regular born shell, as it's known. But the shell that we are going to focus in on happens to be, well, an extension of the born shell. It's known as the born again shell. I know what you're thinking, it's kind of like these Jason Bourne films whereby you have the first one and then you have the sequel. And quite often in movies, the sequel does not live up to the standards of the original, but that is not the case here. In the Born Again shell, the reimagination of the older Born shell, it really is a much better shell to work with. Now, in the case of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, the default shell happens to be the Born Again shell, which is more commonly known as a Bash shell. Hence the name Born Again Shell. So this one here, the default, is the one that we are really going to be focused in on. Now the good thing with Bash is that we get a lot of good features such as auto-completion when we're typing out particular commands or specifying particular paths. As you're going to learn, this makes our lives much, much easier. But we're also going to have to be aware that Bash is case sensitive, meaning that if you type a command and you happen to specify a capital letter where a capital letter should not be, then that command is not going to work. So just bear that in mind and be careful. So we have this shell right here. Like I say, it's a way for us to talk to the system. But the way we're going to access this shell environment is via a terminal, which is exactly what I'm using right here. Now, the cool thing is that with respect to these graphical installations, this little application that I'm running right now is actually what is known as a virtual terminal. And one of the cool features about having this virtual terminal is that we can actually have access to multiple windows at the same time, having multiple different shell sessions on the go. So check this right here. If I just type out a general command such as ls, here we can see the output. However, if I go and click this little plus icon right here, I also get a second tab. So we can click the left one to get back to the original environment. But then I can click back over and then type in a new command and do different tasks if I so wish. This is one of the big advantages of having this graphical environment and these virtual terminals to give us access to our shell environment. Now, what I first want to do is to show you a command known as the who command. Let's just type this out here, okay? So if I say who and hit enter, basically what this command is showing me is who is logged into the system. So on the very left hand side, we can see the actual username, which is my username right here. We can see this option for TTY2. Now, very generally speaking, TTY just tells us about the terminal that is in operation. Right now, we have TTY2. But say, for example, I went into a text-based environment that did not have a graphical user interface and tried to log into the system once again, we could actually spawn up another terminal session. This could be, say, for example, TTY3. And like I say, this information will be reflected via the who command, the user that is logged in, their terminal session, as well as time and date information about when that session was started. Now, say for example, I wanted to change my virtual terminal. What I could do is use the command chvt and then give an associated number for that terminal. So if I just happen to say, let's go with chvt and call it tty4. One thing to note here is that if I try to run this command, we're actually going to get an error. And that's because I'm going to have to have super user privileges right here. Basically, this has to be performed by the administrator. Now, we'll talk about super users and elevated privileges in a lot more detail throughout this course. But for now, the command that we can use to invoke that super user privilege is the command sudo. This is a super well-known command and it's something you're going to see all over the place. So if I just say sudo chvt and then give that terminal number that I want to spawn, if I hit enter, it's going to ask me for my password for super user privileges. I will type that in. 
And bam, it snapped me into this text-based environment. No longer are we in this graphical environment. So if I just log in with my username IPv0, type in my password once again, we can see the last login from my previous session was on TTY2 at 1711. If I now say who, we can indeed see that I now have a session IPv0 for TTY4. And once again, if I want to change back, I can just say sudo chvt and go back to terminal number two again, type in my password for the super user, hit enter, and now we flash back into the current session once again. So now we understand the concept of shells and terminals, but that doesn't really help us navigate the command line and work with these shells. How on earth are we going to do that? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in the very next video. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a career in IT or just looking to brush up your IT skills, then be sure to visit cbtnuggets.com for a free trial.